The Beatles are a band that have never been short of their fair share of unanswered mysteries and conspiracy theories. Since the Fab Four's inception in 1960, fans have been filling in the blank spots for themselves and answering questions such as, was Paul really dead? Did Bob Dylan really force the man to smoke ganja? Was Halter Skelter really written about an imminent apocalyptic race war? These examples are just some mysteries that have been left unanswered over the years, but in this video I will be attempting to answer some of my personal favourites. I'm Robert the Beatle Maniac and this is 5 Strange Beatles Mysteries. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that like button or Mean Mr Mustard will be out to get you. Number 5 Number 5 Number 5 Reverse Lyrics The Beatles were never strangers to using backmasking techniques to reverse lyrics or instrumentation on their songs. Examples being the fade out on the B-side Rain or the perceived hidden messages scattered throughout the White Album's avant-garde sound collage offering, Revolution 9. Personally, I find that the most chilling instance of this takes place on the elusive 16th take of Strawberry Fields Forever. In the closing studio chatter segment of the take, if John's vocal track is isolated and reversed, he actually reveals some eye-opening truths about the other band members. Take a listen. Yes, we're Siam, get off. No, he was switch noise. That was the backwards vocal track as it appears normally at the end of the song. Now, take a listen to it played in reverse. I think it was great. Can we try it again. <laughs> One more time from the top. Alright. George used to eat wood. Paul ate my ass. Ringo's gay. It's difficult to say whether these claims hold any real truth, or if they were just a bit of friendly studio banter, but I like to think that John is providing the listener with a brief behind the scenes glimpse into the Fab Four's private lives. Did George ever happen to eat wood, if only by accident? Did Paul routinely enact analingus on his fellow bandmate and friend? And most curious of all, was Ringo gay? Unfortunately, without any conclusive evidence, these reversed sound bites will forever remain as Beatles mysteries. Number 4 Number 4 Number 4 Beatles for Sale Album Artwork December of 1964 saw the Beatles release their fourth studio album, Beatles for Sale which marked a departure from their earlier works and saw the Fab Four writing and recording more introspective and sombre songs. This tonal shift was reflected in the album cover artwork which showed the glum and tired band members standing in an autumnal Hyde Park. This is all well and good, but what about these two objects that are obstructing the shot, blurred by their proximity to the lens? It has since been revealed that the object to the left was a leaf from a branch, but what about the peculiar orange entity to the right? To this day, there has been no conclusive answer, so I've taken the liberty of creating a few mock-ups of my own. Take a look. Unfortunately, despite all efforts, we may never have a conclusive answer to this, as the photographer has since died, and Paul and Ringo won't answer any of my emails. It remains a Beatles mystery. Number 3 Number 3 Number 3 The Fifth Beatle Over the band's 10 year career, there have been a handful of people who have fit the title of The Fifth Beatle ex-band members Stuart Sutcliffe or Pete Best, band manager Brian Epstein or producer George Martin. But it is a little known fact that the person that actually had the most profound impact on the band was in fact Muhammad Ali. 
Following their fateful 1964 meeting in Miami, Florida, the Fab Four found themselves collaborating frequently with the boxer, who provided lyrics for the Sgt. Pepper song Lovely Rita and infamously played the anvil on Maxwell's Silver Hammer. Unfortunately, goodwill between the band members ended bitterly after a fight broke out between Ali and Lennon at the inauguration ceremony for President Jimmy Carter. John later claimed that the boxer had tried to make him sing Hey Jude and after the altercation had left him with a black eye and two broken ribs. Number two, number two, number two, Forgotten Albums. The Fab Four have been said to have created a number of secret albums that have disappeared under the radar over the years. A few of these rumoured albums are the Abbey Road sequel Monument, the missing early LP Wet Behind the Ears, and the band Love Is Gonna Come and Save Us All, of which all copies have since been destroyed. But in my opinion, none of these even come close to the mythical Beatles Cubed. Recorded in secret when Ringo briefly left the band in 1968 during the White Album sessions, the album has only been heard by a number of people, one of which was then janitor for Abbey Road Studios, Thomas Parker, who claims to have heard a lot of the album through the notoriously thin studio walls while he was cleaning out an adjacent storage cupboard. Sources claim that the album featured no drums or percussion, owing to the title Beatles Cubed, as only Beatles John, Paul and George worked on the album. There was a heavy emphasis on harmonising of the Fab Three's vocals, much like the later song Because, rumoured to be a leftover from this project. It is unknown why the group chose to scrap the album, but it is speculated that it had something to do with Ringo's return which itself sounds like a brilliant album, I think. Sadly, we will never truly know any song names or lyrics from the album, as Thomas Parker died in an automobile accident shortly afterward, and Paul and Ringo won't answer any of my phone calls. It remains a Beatles mystery. Number one, number one, number one. Who was the walrus? A recurring motif that John Lennon often used in his songs was that of the mythical walrus. The walrus was of course first mentioned in the eponymous 1967 magical mystery tour song I Am The Walrus. Although John later claimed that the song's lyrics were complete gibberish and made up to confuse avid interpreters of his songwriting, that hasn't stopped us. Each time the walrus pops up in a song, John seems to go back and forth on whether it referred to himself or Paul. Fans have speculated that the moniker was used to reflect who held leadership in the band, which I think speaks volumes. In I Am The Walrus, John profoundly claims that he is the walrus four times in total. Take a listen. I am the walrus. This shows his surety of his founding leader position at this point in the band's history. But all that would change. The very next year in 1968 saw the release of the Beatles self-titled album and third track Glass Onion, which features this perplexing line. The was in the Walrus's second canonical mention, John is now claiming it to in fact be Paul who is the Walrus, showing his internal struggle and him perhaps considering Paul as the frontman. A few years later after the band's breakup, on his 1970 debut solo album, John Lennon Plastic Ono Band, John Lennon once again refers to the character of the walrus in track 10, God. Take a listen. I was the walrus. This time, John has returned to claiming himself as the walrus, but in past tense, citing he is no longer the walrus and therefore no longer the leader of the Beatles. Then, in another shocking turn of events, on a rare outtake on John's 1971 album Imagine, John seems to have changed his mind once again. Take a listen. 
Paul was the walrus. Paul was the walrus. Paul was the walrus. Now, he is repeatedly saying that Paul was the walrus, almost in frustration, perhaps due to the schism between the two former bandmates around this time. A few years later, John's 1975 covers album, Rock and Roll, shows us yet another twist in the walrus saga. I'm the fucking walrus, and I always fucking have been. Yeah! This rare excerpt shows that John has once again changed his mind. He was the walrus all along, and always will be. This is the last known mention of the walrus by its creator John, but the mystery continues long after his death. In his 2018 album Egypt Station, a bonus track reveals Paul McCartney's true thoughts on the matter, bringing the mystery to what fans thought was a heartwarming conclusion. John was always the walrus man. But then, just last year, an archival recording from the sessions of the experimental 1968 Two Virgins album with Yoko Ono was discovered. In the lost recording, John seems to have once again changed his mind. Take a listen. The walrus was actually rigged up. Well that just about wraps up my 5 favourite Beatles mysteries. Which one did you think was the best? Don't forget to leave a comment in the box down... down... Hold on. Hello? This is a serious message. Oh my god. I want to tell you. Yeah? Please do not send fan mail to any address that you have. Uh. I'm warning you with peace and love, but I have too much to do. Okay. So no more fan mail. Thank you, thank you. Oh, all right. Uh, anyway, peace and love, peace and love. Oh, that was Ringo Starr. He finally answered my all my calls. <laughs> oh my god.